mean, all this paper is not because I'm nervous, but because of the tons of people that are here. It's because I have a pinched neck and it causes my hand to shake. Bob gave me some instruction about speaking one time. We were talking about a funeral we had. He says, you get in a tough spot, talk real low. Because that forces the throb right out of your throat and you can talk again. So if I talk real low, if you don't have to forgive me, it's because I really love you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, grandchildren, loved ones. I'm here today to give a short talk. No, not a talk, but a kind of a eulogy. No, 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 no. Maybe just to tell you about my association with this guy named Bob. Just recollect about my time and the mortal life that I have with a good friend, a buddy, that I had a pleasure to know and get together with. Whenever we had time. And Catherine asked me to give a short something or other at this way. No, it's not a way. Get together. Yeah. Tribute or whatever you want to call it. Let's call it a celebration of Bob's life. He'd like that. He never was one to seek praise because he just liked doing things with people. Anyway, when she asked me in relief, I thought, no, no way. There's no way of getting up there in front of 5,000 people, shaking and being nervous. But before I could turn her down, a fleeting moment of weakness came over me, and I thought, why not? I love the guy. Why not tell it like it is? So I hastily said, okay. I need to say, I'm not going to get through this, but the only tucking of the lip or the silent grip of care running down my cheek. So let's give it a try. I've known Bob for about 20 years, take a few here and there. I met him through the association of my wife, Carol and Catherine. It was long enough ago that I can't really remember just how, but I distinctly remember this large man with a great sense of humor, easy to talk to quite a sincere want to get to know me, me of all people. Well, it didn't take long to understand that I wanted to get to know him better also. And over the years, we have become and are very good and close friends. Friends, you know I have a friend, and I have friends, and then you have a friend, and no matter what happens, that they are always there, sometimes, just out of the blue, and for no reason, a rhyme, you decide to call them up or they call you and the phone will ring and there they are. I haven't had a ton of friends like that, but I can tell you that I consider Bob one of those friends. We both had a bad habit. Well, not a really bad habit. But when we call one another, we weren't always the fastest to get back to each other. It might take a day or two or a week. So I'd get worried and I'd say when Bob had called me right back after a day or two, I'd talk to Carol and I'd say, well, I wonder if Bob's really ticked off with me because they didn't call him right back. And I don't know what he thought about me because I've always been kind of late. No sooner I said that than the phone would ring. There's this voice on the other side. Hello, good buddy. Is this the one and only T.W.? And get this. Sorry, buddy. I didn't get back to you sooner. Isn't that just like you? Wouldn't wait until I was trouble even apologizing to him. He just had to be him. Always so nice. Nice to me. Nice to me. One couldn't ask for a better friend. I know that he was that way with all the people he associated with. He just was so easy to get to know. Sincerely interested in you. You always will be my friend. We know the celebration is about Bob. There's no shrine or anything, but I'll tell you about a place in my living room that I always consider kind of a shrine for my buddy Bob. Over the years, it became evident that we both had a liking for football games, BYU especially, other special games in the Super Bowl, etc. But we liked watching them together and with our families. So we decided to watch as many of them as we could together. 
I like Carolyn, Catherine, and Bob, and I was many stage, but anyone could come and have a ball. The more the merrier, you would always say, what can we bring? I'll cook something or other. Stop off and buy something. And offer all these things. That's just the way Catherine and Bob are. He wanted it to be fun, simple, and great. He liked to have good food. Things like the little wieners, the shrimp, oh yeah, the coconut pie. Maybe a little frog egg salad. Seemed to like that. So back to my story. Something new, but not old, is a white couch, a leather couch that sits in front of our 60-inch TV. Right side of it, right in front of the TV. Between the stereo speakers and about eight feet away. Make that about six and a half feet away from Bob. Uh -huh. That is Bob's place. No trading, no secrets. Sneaking in. Even the dog Moose, whose place it was when Bob wasn't there, knew better than to sit there. I'd hand the clicker and say, go to it. We, of course, should have been the coaches of all the teams and look out for the referees. But this week when I get home from work, I'm sitting in the next to the couch, reminded me, guess who? My buddy Bob. As long as we have that couch and it's in the same place, it will always be kind of my surrounding the ball. But I know that it wasn't just the ball game why we got together. It was a carabinship, just like getting for visit, whoop and holler, be in one another's company, just that way. Family, I know that you know anybody that knew Bob knew how much he loved his family. He was always ready to let you know how everybody was, from his oldest to his youngest, daughter, son-in-law's, grandkids, and everybody. Kids spread from North Carolina to Idaho and Utah, they didn't matter. He always knew how they were, and most of all, he liked to tell you about it. I'm not saying he knew everything, but he knew how much he cared because he tried. He never had a derogatory word to say about the guy. In all the conversations, there are many. He held you in the highest esteem. He thought you were a beautiful girl in the world. Smarter than he was, and better able to get him to do most of the things that you wanted him to do. What a great couple you made. And we'll make again. Same with you kids. Always proud of what you accomplished, and even what, what you did. I think it's called unconditional love. Well, enough said. Nice guy, wow. I think I put him way up on a pedestal. Why not? So you think you've known a nice guy sometime in your life, but he must have been the Mr. Nice Guy Bob Allen. I'm so glad it's Bob Allen, not Bob Nelson, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> the epitome of nice and good. How about this? You didn't ever want to tell him you were going to change something on your house, build something, need something done, long as work. Because eventually here comes Bob. And just to let you know that he could do just about anything with wood. Refurbishing, building something, construction, he was one of those guys that was doing these kinds of things that needed to be done right. Because here he comes with his expert advice and always going to jump right in and help or just do it himself. We were at the cabin strawberry one weekend. How he liked the mountains in the solitude. We were cooking outside with barbecue gas stove. I looked around and said, You haven't got anything to put this stuff on. So I scrounged up some chairs and he pulled some stuff over that we may do. Well, the next time we go up, he says, I thought you may like these. So he pulled out two of these neat little tables or three. And Put some over by the cook stoves and they fit just right. And there were some tables that he's made in his shop that he used all the time out back. Oh my! He 
comes to our house one day and he's walking in the front door and he says, boy, you really need some new front doors. He saw my front doors. He did. So he proceeded to get up and take start getting all his nails. I say, no way. It's too darn much hard work. I'm just tired done. But he says, no, we'll take care of this. So he goes out and he finds some old church doors, solid church doors. No bob that we can afford a challenge for him. So he cuts them up and makes them measurements and brings them out. So we go to put them up and they won't work because of the frames of the house. Does he get mad? No way. He just says, we'll have to think about something else. So about two months later, it's in the middle of winter, Carol finds some new doors. I'm mistakenly telling him about them. And he sits and put them in. So him and Carol come over one cold and wintry night, about two, three in the afternoon, and we proceed to put the dang doors in. It takes about five hours. Temperatures in the 20, and blowing like a hurricane. And they won't quit. It was done. Done the right way. And they weren't done the right way. That's the way it was. All, all of us were frozen in the house of the team. But they were done the right way, and they looked that way just the way it was. A volunteer, I'll bet you Bob's in heaven, and he has already volunteered to be the caretaker of 30 gates. I hope he is then, because I might have a chance. If he pulls enough strings, I'll get in. He told me that he liked to do things like volunteer. He just got to meet you, and he felt like doing something with Bob. Whether it was neighborhood sheriff, voting volunteer, every single dishwasher, shop the walk once a supervisor, it didn't matter to him. He liked to watch chop the walks a bunch of supervisors and eat about any sandwich that he wanted. He could pretty well, with the help of my drag Carol, talk me into doing or going anywhere or anything. So he talked me into going to the art festival in Park City one year. Oh boy, what was I going to do at the art festival? He knows I'm not to do that type of thing very much, so he takes me aside and he says, your wife and my wife just love to shop, don't they? Well, what we will do is start out with them, try and get a hold of the checkbook, got a chance of that, and then tell them to just get ahead, to go ahead, to take the sweet time, we will find them and take them to lunch later. He pulls me aside and then he says to me, We'll take our time, find a nice shady bench somewhere, get us a nice cold diet Pepsi, a diet coke and a pinch, and watch all the fantastic people we buy. So that's what we were talking about. Wifey's were fine. We were having a blast watching the people in the suit We love to watch people. Never made fun of anybody, but discuss them all. He was an artist. But you didn't know that, did you? So he would take me to the artist booths, and we would look at the art, and he would tell me, about what it was, and he even made a fun. He loved to paint. He didn't have all that much time to do it, so he said. He painted us some watercolor Christmas cards a couple of Christmas ago. And actually, they were so good, my bride framed them. He thought we were nuts. Assuming, unassuming, just a nice guy. I must say, the beyond our family that anybody would like to associate with, all of them. I have to say, your husband, father, uncle, dad, dad, along with the sweet bride, Catherine, are number one. So many stories to tell, many good experiences. I come in a family like Bob. They knew how much I and Carol liked him, and they formed their own opinion of him. I welcome him and Catherine and all the family to our family. And my sweet granddaughter told when Bob had died that they cared up and Jill, the first thing she said was, Bob was like her other grandfather. He had that way. The way that he loved him, didn't he? Just about that. He was a big man of stature. When he was around my wife, he looked like Michael Jack. Someone told me someone called him a gentle giant. How fitting. When we were saving places for the Fourth of July parade, on July 3rd, by the way, he told me he just loved parades. 
everybody could. I just about time to rush just about just about time to rush to rush and put out chairs and tarps. We got that time about five o'clock. <coughs> so you can say with praise for the parade the next day. Pray with praise to do July 4th. Well this car pulls up and starts to unload the car out in front of where we were sitting. We've been there for 10 hours in the heat. I am thirst. Now i two six packs or 12 packs of hot and Pepsi. <laughs> so I rush over and proceed to tell them that, they were, that, that we were here first. They start to give me a bunch of oh. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Bob get up and then it's John Wayne walk. He starts walking towards us. When they see him coming, I see their eyes get big and they just pack up. And the things and they go away. Well, when Bob gets to me and he asks me what happened, I'm not wanting to give him a big head, I said I just had to get tough. <laughs> he laughed and said all the bad. Little known that if I had let him get to us, I believe he would have made sure that they had a place to watch the program. Hardest thing, isn't it? Nice guy. Good guy, caring guy, loving guy. Put him on the pedestal. You bet. Well, I'm about done. For you who are not religious, or to those of you who are, here he comes. I could not tell you how he loved the Lord. He was a very spiritual man. <coughs> he had a great testimony. We had some good people. Tony talks about it, didn't he? And I'll testify to you oh, that if I live the way he lived, I have a very good chance to see and be with him again. Well, and all that believe in the precious gift of life after death, I feel in my heart that we will be with him and our families and our friends that have gone before. There to welcome us there, but comfort for those who believe in the next life, as he did. That's it. Thanks for the memories. Hold them close. Then there was this guy named Bob. Put him up on a pedestal. You bet.